I have found my way to the National Physical Laboratory in London and I have found a physicist. So, who are you? Uh, my name's Kate Baxter. I am a radiation physicist. Uh, and I, yeah, I work in the dissimetry area at NPL. As a physicist, you must have loved science at school, right? Yes, very much so. Um, it, it wasn't until I got to GCSE that I really started to enjoy it because um, there was a project um, all about nuclear energy, actually. And my physics teacher, I was having a bit of trouble with it, so my physics teacher after school sat me down and was like, right, we can do this, you know, you, you know this stuff, you're just kind of having a bit of trouble with it. Um, and he just explained everything to me. And that's when I just suddenly thought, this is so interesting. I never knew that this world existed, or these uh, tiny, the tiny side of the universe, I never knew that it was a thing. Um, and from there, I just, I don't know, I guess I found a love, I think, of it. Great. And loads of people watching this and we just finished their GCSEs. Can you tell us your GCSE grades? Because that's a bit that everyone's really interested in it at the moment. Yeah, I got, I did triple science and I got three A's in each science. And then I also got, um, I got an ACER in maths as well, which is obviously very important for doing physics. Um, but if that wasn't an easy thing. I would stay every single day after school in the science labs and, um, and just revise because I was just not, I was not very good at revising, not very good at focusing on things. Um, and so by having that environment, it just allowed me to do that. So it was, and yeah, yeah, I was so proud of myself when I got A's, I was, I was, especially the A's in maths, I did not see that coming. Um, and even my, even my maths teacher was a bit surprised. I, I, I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I am good at this subject. It was quite surprising. <laughs> and then after GCSEs, what did you do? Um, after GCSEs, I went on to do A-levels. I took a bit of a random bunch of A-levels. I took, I took RE, history, physics and maths. And then I, I made a bit of a mistake. I dropped maths at AS um, because I just, I wasn't getting on very well with it at the time. And I went on and I didn't do particularly great in my in my A-levels. Uh, I actually got a D in physics at the end, which, you know, considering I'm now doing physics, it sounds a bit like a D, you know, what, what are you doing? But luckily MPL is very good at, they don't really mind about your grades, it's more about the person, who you are, and your passion and your willingness to learn. So I got the apprenticeship as soon as I did my A-levels. Yeah, my last, it was on my last physics exam, I got a call from um, from my interviewer and she was like, you, you, did, you did it, you got into apprenticeship. And I thought, okay, well, I've just done my exam, so it doesn't matter now what I did because I know what I'm gonna do now. Um, yeah, so then I went to, on to do the apprenticeship at NPL for 18 months and then I worked at NPL for 18 months. And then NPL kind of gave me this amazing opportunity and said, would you like to go and study physics at university? And I was just, I, considering how not great my A-levels were, I thought that was kind of, that wasn't something that I'd be able to do. But they said they'd sponsor me for uh, a degree course um, and that th every summer I have to come back and uh, do all the work that I was, I, and pick it up again. And at the end of my degree, I get to work here. That's amazing. So which, where are you studying? I'm studying at the University of Kent. What does doing an apprenticeship actually involve? Is it loads of exams, or loads of tests, or is it all working? So the apprenticeship that I took part in was 18 months uh, with two rotations. So I spent nine months in the medical ultrasound division, and then I spent nine months in advanced engineering manufacturing. Obviously two extremely different ends of physics, um, which is fantastic because that's what apprenticeship's meant to do. It's meant to give you this wide variety of potential things that you could do. You're meant to learn all these skills. And then at the end of the 18 months, you decide, right, where did I like the best? Okay, and then there's um, there were jobs at the end um, where you applied depending on you know what you like to do. In terms of what coursework, there was no exams, but we, we did a level three BTEC and a level three MVQ in applied science. Mm -hmm. So uh, the BTEC was just lots of uh, coursework to hand in, uh, all surrounded by physics. We didn't do any biology or or not very many chemistry modules. It was mostly physics and maths modules, and the MVQ was uh, it's basically a a a certificate that says you are practically capable of doing science kind of thing. Uh, and you get examined in the lab to like, show your lab skills, um, which is what you need to do if you're a scientist. You, they need to know that you're competent at doing a job. Uh, and so that's, yeah, it, apprenticeship literally prepares you to go into the working world as a, as a functioning member of society and especially in the science community. That's great. So no like revising for exams or just no. hands on working and showing that you can actually do good stuff. Exactly. And I think a lot of people probably feel that the exams are the horrible bit with science because you've, you're building up to it and you've got to remember all these equations and it's really hard. But actually when it comes down to the practical side of it, a lot of people quite 
enjoy that side and, and actually find it that they're good at that and that, oh, if I can do this bit, why can't I do the exam bit? Which is obviously, you know, what happened with me and my, you know, not doing very good A-levels. So coming into MPL, I kind of found that, oh, actually, I can do physics. And now being at university, I found that I can also do the revising side of it because, because of all the help that MPL's give, given me, I think, hugely. What is the best part about your job? What's the coolest thing you do on like a day-to-day -day or a month-to-month -month basis? The, oh, the coolest thing about my job is getting to work, getting to work with kind of machinery like this. Um, I found after doing my degree and the apprenticeship, I actually found that I really enjoy kind of the electronic side and the technician side of physics of um, basically kind of pressing lots of buttons and knowing what those buttons do and then something happens. I, I really enjoy that. And we're kind of working with things like uh, the, the LINAC um, means that I get to do that. And um, I get to set up all these experiments, press loads of buttons, and then I get results and I get graphs. Graphs are great. I didn't, I actually at school, I didn't quite appreciate, you know, when you draw the graphs and oh, I can see a trend. Now I'm like, oh my God, I can see a trend. This is fantastic. All my, all my work actually works. <laughs> That's brilliant. And what's kind of like the worst thing about what you do on like a, in your job on a day-to-day basis? Uh, well, a necessary part of any research is having to do read lots of papers beforehand um, and then so that you know the context of the science that you're working on. So although these papers are very interesting and lots of new science, having to read them, lots of them over and over and over again and sitting at your desk kind of for a few days on end just making sure you, you know everything can be really hard. Um, and at the end of it, you're like, oh, I, I know everything. But getting to that point, it's a bit like revising for exams. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, I am competent. I can I can understand this now, but it was hard getting there. <laughs> Is there anything like really weird and unexpected that you've had the chance to do that you literally never thought would ever ever happen? Um, so when I was in my first rotation as apprentice, I worked with bubbles, right. which is the most. I love bubbles. I never realised that the science of bubbles is so fascinating and it was working with medical ultrasound and um, the way that ultrasound works it's the change of medium and so it, the idea was if you insert micro bubbles into the blood then you could see the blood system much clearer using ultrasound. It's very interesting, I did like loads of research and I actually got my name on a couple of papers uh, so that was quite cool being 18 years old and, and my supervisor would be like oh, I'm right, I've written a paper Kate and I put your name on it. Wow, thank you. Um, and because of that someone once called up MPL to be like, okay, we've got, we want to see if we can make the world's biggest bubble. And we, have you got any bubble scientists, basically? And my supervisor was busy and he, he goes, yeah, I've just been asked to like, come and look at this world record attempt. Well, um, but I'm a bit busy that day. Will you go ahead and go and um, kind of be the witness for them? And I was like, yes, I suppose. So I went, I went up, at, I think like five in the morning up into this uh, park because there was no wind and they did, the, they did this giant bubble and then I got given all these photographs and I had to go and measure them <laughs> to see, okay, did they do the world's biggest bubble? And they did, which what, is quite cool. Is, how big is the world's biggest bubble? Can you remember? Oh, they've actually it beat it now, oh, but yeah. I think it was something like 20, 20 cubits meters or something like that. It's like really, really big. That's, that's well, it was 20 across, I think, and like five behind. So yeah, pretty big bubble. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to come and talk to me, talk to us. Um, if you guys want to know anything more about apprenticeships here or being a physicist, then go and check out all the links in the description below.